Okay, finishing up in 2 Samuel 24, a very important passage. A passage that you can take to the United Nations. A passage that God has established in His Holy Word. And I checked the modern versions, and separate here and there, only the Living Bible does not give us how much the price was. But all the modern Bibles, except for change of words here, put it to the T. In verse 18, Gad, Gad, that's David's seer, came that day to David and said unto him, Go up, rear an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Arna, the Jebusite. Now remember, that angel's going out with the pestilence. He's killing people. God said, as he's approaching Jerusalem. And verse 16. And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, He's at the place where David's going to go. And the angel Lord was by the threshing uh, place of Arnon, the Jebusite. He's on his way to Jerusalem. He's not going to kill Jerusalem and Gad. Re gets re revelation by God. Go speak to David. We need to build an altar. Build an altar in the Lord in the threshing floor of Arnon, the Jebusite. That's Benjamin the high area. This is Jerusalem. Judah overtakes and overpowers the area. But the land, according to Joshua, the Jebusites were in the Benjaminite area. And David, according to the saying of Gad, went up as the Lord commanded. David obeys God. And Aaron looked and saw the king and his servants coming on toward him. And Aaron went out and bowed, his, bowed himself before the king on his face upon the ground. And Aaron said, Wherefore is my lord, small l, not God, wherefore is my lord the king come to his servant? Now, he's, he's a Jebusite. He's not an Israelite. He's not the children of Israel. He's of the people of the land that God said, you know, you were to wipe them out. David, Lord, I'm your servant. Why are you here? And David said to buy the threshing floor of thee, to build an altar unto the Lord, that the plague may be stayed from the people. So the implication here is if David doesn't do what God just told him to do, Jerusalem would be wiped out. God would say to that angel, go ahead, finish. And Aaron said to David, let my Lord, the king, take and offer up what seemeth good unto him. Behold, here be oxen for a burnt sacrifice. Here's the oxen that plow the ground. Here they are. They're yours. The threshing instruments, the yoke, sleds, everything that's wood, tools. Here they are. They're yours. Burn them. And other instruments of the oxen for wood. So Aaron goes to David and says, Hey, I got to build an altar, David says. And Aaron says, Okay, here it all. Take it all. Aaron is giving to God through David. Here's everything. This is a Jebusite. This is a Gentile. And David says, listen, there's a plague. And when we look at 1 Chronicles 21, we'll, in a moment, we'll see even more. But here's a heathen giving to God through David. Is that not a picture of the Christian? We give to God through Jesus Christ. Our offering our sacrifice. It's not my righteousness. It's not my goodness. It's the goodness and righteousness of Jesus Christ. It's his merit, not mine. Everything I give to God, I give to the Lord Jesus Christ. But things are different here. All these things did I, uh, when I said to David, let my Lord the King take and offer up what seemeth good unto him. So it's a blank check. Everything's here. Take it. Here be the oxen. The oxen were part of the, the, the offering for a burned sacrifice. I mean, you're going to build an altar. You need something to give, David. Here it is. Threshing instruments. You need to start the fire. You need to build up the altar. Here's the instrument. Other instruments of the oxen for wood. That's an important statement, the wood. We're going to come across that in a moment. Here's the wood. Here's the instruments. Here's the animals. You need an altar. You need to please God. I give you everything, David. 
All these things did Aaron as a king. Wait, did all these things did Aaron as a king give unto the king? And Aaron said unto the king, The Lord thy God accept thee. May God approve. May God approve what I give you to give to God. That's a great wild statement. Two faithful men. And the king said to Aaron, Nay, but I will surely buy it. Of thee at a price. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God. Of that which does does cost me nothing. I'm not taking it for free. People seem to think that, you know, it's free. No, it costs something. Someone else paid the price. David says, I got to pay the price. Jesus Christ had to pay the price. No one else. I, as Aaron, could not do it. Jesus Christ, David, has to offer that price. Cost me nothing. So here we go. David bought the threshing floor. He bought the threshing floor. And the oxen. Now, we got to get this because this, there's a problem in the Bible. He bought the threshing floor. That's where they thresh the wheat. And it's wheat here. When we look at Chronicles. The wheat. This is the ground where they toss up the wheat in the air and the, the oxen, needs the oxen, for 50 shekels of silver. Now with First Chronicles 21 that we're going to look at, there is the title deed to the Temple Mount right there where David's standing, where he's going to build that altar. That's going to be where the holy place is, the most holy place. That's going to where it be the Ark of the Covenant it will sit on Solomon's Temple. And Ezra's temple, where the dumb of the rock is sitting today, David purchased it. It is recorded in your Bible. David bought that threshing floor for 50 shekels of silver and the ox. Title deed recorded in your Bible. You can take this to the United Nuts. You can take this to the UAR. You can take this to the Muslims. You can take this to everybody in the Middle East and say, there's the title deed. One day, Jesus Christ is going to evict all you. One day, Jesus Christ is going to set that ground. That temple that will be before Jesus Christ as he is seated on David's throne. That temple will be there. That mercy seat. That holy of holiest will again sit where David purchased the 50 shepherds. Where David built that altar. Where David offered those oxen. We'll look at Chronicles. And David built there an altar. Where his son Solomon will set the mercy seat. Unto the Lord. And offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. Like the priest were. He's doing it. Let me ask you a question. Where are the priests? There's not one priest mentioned in this passage. Only Gad. Isn't it interesting? It looks like the way the wording is. David's doing it. He said, you guys said, David, he said, go up, rear up an altar. David, you rear up that altar. David rears it up. David pays for it. David is making the offering as Jesus Christ. And David built there an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord was entreated. It means the Lord was pleased as Isaac entreated the Lord for Rebekah's wife because she was barren. God's like, okay, I'm satisfied. For the land, for the land, it was Jebusite land. Not by war, but by the purchase price of David to a Jebusite. Not by war of a Catholic church, but by purchase price of silver. David buys that spot today that people have been fighting over. David buys that spot where religions have been fighting over. Where children of Abraham, not of Isaac, not of Jacob, have been fighting for that land. David purchases it. And the plague was stayed from Israel. Now 1 Chronicles 21, 18. we got two more places. And one of them you're going to be like, wow. 1 Chronicles, I'm in 2 Chronicles. 1 Chronicles 21. Now, I didn't check this one because hopefully, Lord willing, we will come to this one. And there's almost the same, just a few interesting 
more facts than what we read in 2 Samuel, as the Bible will have. And 1 Chronicles 21, 18. Then the angel of the Lord. That is Jesus Christ before he was born in Bethlehem. That is before he became incarnate in the flesh. He would appear in the Old Testament as the angel of the Lord. You know where he first shows up? Genesis 16, 11. No, yeah, I think it's 16, 11. See that, 315. Those are two special verse chapters and verse numbers. But he shows up to Hagar and a woman at the well. John chapter 4. The angel of the Lord commanded Gad to say to David that David should go up to mountain and set up an altar. So rear means set up, second Samuel, unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Ornan. Now they have a problem with the spelling. Of the name. You can spell your name different ways. You got Thomas, T H O M A S, T O M. My wife, T R A C Y, T R A C E Y. Depends who you're talking to. There's no nothing wrong. They throw it out because it didn't match. But that's not the problem. We'll come to the problem. The Jebusite. He's a Jebusite. He has a threshing floor. It is wheat harvest. You know, Ruth opens up in barley harvest, and she continues to the wheat harvest. And in the wheat harvest, her and Boaz meet and get married. And David went up at the saying of Gad, which he spanked in the name of the Lord. Jehovah told you, David, go. And Ornan turned back and saw the angel. Okay, this is extra information, not in 2 Samuel 24. He sees that angel over there. The angel stopped. God says, stop. And his four sons with him hid themselves. Look, we're out of here. That angel, that angel inspired fear and terror. Now Oren was threshing wheat, not barley, wheat. Except for corn and wheat fall to the ground. Oh, barley wouldn't fit. Barley wouldn't fit. You know, in the grounds of the U.S. Capitol, one of the products, it was uh, wheat, corn, as in popcorn, corn, corn on the cob, tobacco, the U.S. Capitol. Here is wheat. And as David came to Ornan, Ornan looked and saw David and went out of the threshing floor. He leaves the threshing floor and bowed himself to David with his face to the ground. He's a king. Reverend. You know, nobody ever shows the President of the United States, whoever he is. They don't ever show him no respect. You know, maybe put your hand out and shake. Then David said to Orm, Grant me the place, that's important, of this threshing floor, that I may build an altar therein unto the Lord. Thou shalt grant it me for full price. That the plague may be stayed from the people. Now this also happened with, we're going to look, not at this, but Abraham had the same deal with the people of the land. He says, listen, I need a burying place for Sarah. Oh, you can have it. You're respectable. Here it is. Take it. He says, no, 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 no. I'm not going to do anything unless I pay for it. And another, another title deed in the book of Genesis is where Abraham buys the burying place for Sarah. And yet becomes the family graveyard, except for uh, Rachel. David's the same way. I need to buy this property. This showed up with his great, 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 great grandfather for a buying place. Well, and David went out the threshing. Then David said to Orm, "Grant me the place, the place of the threshing floor, that I may build an altar therein unto the Lord. Thou shalt grant it me for full price." That the plague may be stayed from the people. There's that angel. <laughs> Need your help. And Oran said to David, Take it to thee, and let my lord, the king, do that which is good in the eyes. Lo, I give thee the oxen also for a burnt offering. There they are. 
and the threshing instruments for wood, there they are, and the wheat for the meat offering, I gave it all. Now look at what else we learned in Chronicle. Not only the instruments, not only the oxen, not only the wood, but he says, I got wheat right here. We'll give it to God as a meat offering. And you find that in Leviticus. What would that wheat and wheat would have turned into? Bread. What would have happened with those oxen? Would not their blood been shed? Don't you now see the bread and the blood? Don't you now see the Last Supper? Don't you see the Lord's Supper here? The bread and the blood. That wasn't mentioned in 2 Samuel, the wheat. He said, I Aaron says, here, it's all yours. Take it. Me and my sons will go. And the way Oran is, you know, you want one of my sons? You take the old, take the... This guy says, take it all. He loves the Lord. He loves the king. I give it all. And King David said to Oran, nay, but I will verily buy it for the full price. For I will not take that which is thine for the Lord, nor offer burnt offering without cost. So David gave Ornan for the place 600 shekels of gold by weight. You say that did not match 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel said the threshing floor and the oxen. What we're reading in 1 Chronicles 21 is the entire place, all the acreage. 2 Samuel records the place where the altar is going to be and the oxen. For the offering. First Chronicles says the acreage. He bought it all. Not only the threshing floor, but all the land. Where all the wheat would have been. See, there's a place where the wheat is grown. And there's a place where you bring the wheat and you thresh it. Two different places. So David brought, bought the fields. Where the disciples were walking through a field of one corn one day. And rubbing and eating. Where Jesus said one time in the book of the Gospel of John, look unto the harvest, aren't they white unto the... Finishing the, the verse there. 600 shekels of gold by weight. That's, there's no problem. One is the acreage, the other one's just the floor. And David built there an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings and called upon the Lord and he answered him from heaven. We didn't get that in 2 Samuel. By fire upon the altar for the birth. We didn't get that for David lays out the offering. He lays out the wood. He lays out the oxen. He lays out the here's the altar. Lord God, is this acceptable too? <laughs> I guess so. Very rarely has that happened. And you got to wonder, is that what happened with Abel's offering? Lord, is this offer approved? Boom. Elijah with the, with the prophets of Baal. Boom. Is Elijah or Elijah? I forget which one. With, with the, the armies and their captains. It burns up three companies of men. David did not light a lighter. He built the altar. He put the wood on it. Put the wood on it. And the Lord gave the fire. Do you know what lit the fires and the candles in the temple? Was that fire off the brazen altar and that came from God. I believe that's going to happen when we get to Solomon building it. I think fire comes down from God. I can't remember. That's an answer to prayer. And the Lord commanded the angel. And he put up his sword... Oh, now I know why that uh, his sons ran. This angel's holding a sword. Again, unto his thief. There, That's exactly what um, Balaam saw. He saw an angel with a sword in his hand. I'd be scared too. At that time, when David saw the Lord, he answered him in the threshing floor of Ornan to Jebusay. Then he sacrificed there. Here he sacrificed. Didn't he get the oxen? Didn't the oxen burn up? Wasn't there wheat? But David gave more. For the tabernacle of the Lord 
which Moses made in the wilderness. There it is. There's a place of curtains. There's a brazen altar. There's a laver. There's the curtains. There's the table. There's the candlestick. There's the incense, the incense altar. There's the, the Ark of the Covenant. There's the mercy seat. There's the cherubim, which Moses made in the wilderness, and the altar of burnt offering were at that season in the high place at Gibeon. Now, why would that be mentioned? Because it's going to eventually move to this place that David is now, where Solomon builds that temple. And that ark and that mercy seat are going to be seated right there with that altar where God sent fire, where they got the dumb on the rock today. I had someone tell me, the other day, they're trying to say that that's not the actual place of the temple. Yes, it is. Only a fool would say, oh, that isn't. We're not done. But David could no, I mean, David could not go before it to inquire of God, for he was afraid because of the sword of the angel of the Lord. So that temple is nearby. He couldn't get there. The road was blocked by that angel. David un Potentially, unwarily, unknowing, it's standing right now in the Holy of Holies. And he doesn't even know it. Now, one more place. Genesis, of all places, 22. About this location. Genesis 22. What else happened at this spot? Genesis 22.1. Yes, Genesis 22, 1 is the same place David is standing. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. And said unto him, Abraham? And he said, Behold, here I am I. He said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, beloved son, beloved only son, and get thee into the land of Moriah. That's exactly where David is. And offer him up for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him. And Isaac, his son, claved the wood. Thank you, Onam. For the burnt offering. Supposed to be an ox or an animal. And rose up and went unto the place. Second Chronicles. Of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place. God puts his words correct. Now, I did not check that with the modern Bibles, the word place. Should have. Afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide here with the ass. Where are the four sons of Monad? They are somewhere else. They're hiding. They are not going to be where Abraham is. They are not where David is. Isn't that interesting? I wonder how many... And abide here with the with the ass. Nine, I, David would be riding an ass. I don't know if he if he had one, but he would be riding one. That's what King threw. And I and the lad will go yonder and worship. That's what David did. He worshiped God, and come again to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, the cross. And he took the fire in his hand. Okay, well, Isaac, uh, Abraham's got his own fire. But Abraham's a type of God, isn't he? And Isaac, the type of Jesus Christ. Where did that fire come from for David? It came from a type of Abraham, a type of God. So here comes God carrying fire. David said, Lord, you prove. Now, is not Isaac standing there with Abraham as this is happening? Is not Isaac a type of Jesus Christ? Yes. Is not the angel of the Lord standing there with David? Is not the angel of the Lord? Don't you see the facilities of the whole story together? Isaac, type of Jesus Christ, standing there right now. The angel of the Lord, Jesus Christ, standing there right now. He took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father, he said, here am I, my son. And he said, behold the fire and the wood. <laughs> that's probably what David would have said, right? Behold the fire and the wood. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> now that's extra. But where is the lamb? 
That's not what David had. He had oxen. Why couldn't David offer an oxen if that's the most holy place? Was it the Day of Atonement? No. Was David a high priest? No. Only two times in a year could a high priest come into that place. And when he come into the most holy place, he better have only one blood. It better be the blood of a lamb. Not oxen. Where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. Jesus Christ is standing right there with David as the angel of the Lord. So they went, both of them, together. And they came to the place. Now this is the place right now, verse 9, where David built that altar. When God had told him, of, David, go build an altar over there. Right where Onan's threshing floor, not his acreage. The exact spot is the threshing floor. Which you, I forget, Second Samuel, was it 60 feet of silver, whatever it was? And the oxen. Second Chronicles says the whole acreage. Second Samuel puts it on that threshing floor. That threshing floor is the same spot where Abraham and Isaac are standing right now. That's where the holy of holiest place is going to be. That's where that dumb of the rock is right now. Because God's mad with Israel. God has set them aside. He's put the Gentiles, the Gentiles that make those Jews get angry. A stumbling block. What more stumbling block can get? All right, let's bring our offerings to the temple. What's your temple? It's the dumb of the rock, the Gentiles. Can't do nothing. Pretty soon the Antichrist, the next thing is going to happen, the Antichrist is going to have a temple. And he's going to sit right here. And at that moment when he sits in the most holy place, where Abraham and Isaac is, where David purchased, where Solomon is going to put the most holy place, the Antichrist is going to sit there, he's going to pull back that veil, he's going to say, I'm God, and those Jews get out. Run. You better not play it. You better pray. Your flight's not in the winter. You better be, not be pregnant. You better not be nursing a child. When If you're in the field, go. If you're in your house rooftop, go. This is a very important spot in history. And right now, in history, the Gentiles are there. The Gentiles are in power. Daniel. And came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there. Oh, David. And laid the wood in order, David. And bound Isaac, his son. He would bound the oxen. And laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took a knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord, there he is again, shows up with Abraham and shows up with David. He's going to show up again, approximately 33 AD. He's going to be on that wood. Notice how both places there are wood and Jesus Christ there is wood. He's hanging from that wood. He's on that cross saying, this is where Abraham was going to offer Isaac. This is the place where David bought. Moses, everything settled. Everything settled, Lord. Elijah, everything settled. Everything settled. It is finished. The angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven. Said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. And he said, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son. God gave it all to his son, Isaiah 53. Thy only son from me. Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, I mean, excuse me, behold behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. It is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. And all kinds of history. So here a ram is offering with the angel of the Lord. David offers oxen. What did John the Baptist say? Behold the Lamb of God. There it is. There it is. You know, why, you know why they don't want the Bible? 
I am told that when our U.S. servicemen of any military branch, if they're going to be sentenced, <laughs> sentenced, if they're going to be transferred over to the Middle East countries, many of those countries, they cannot bring their Bibles. Their Bibles are confiscated. They are not allowed. Why? Because it's against them. It's for Israel. It's for the saving grace of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ alone. And what place is the hotbed of war? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. You want to go to the holy city? That ain't holy yet. I'm going to the holy city when Jesus Christ makes it holy. 